Hello YouTube and welcome back into another Civilization 6 video. Today we were streaming on Twitch, which you should definitely check out. That link is in the description. And we have someone in chat who was asking a lot of questions about that first couple of turns in a game, how to get your first cities out, how many cities should you be building in your games of Civ. And what I thought I'd do is do a quick little tutorial for you guys on how to approach the first 50 turns of a Civ game. Now keep in mind, every Civ game is different. Your leader, your map, all of those types of things change how you approach it. The difficulty can sometimes change it as well. But let's go over in your average game of Civ with an average Civ on an average map on your average difficulty, how do you want to approach those first 50 turns? For this tutorial, we are going to play as Rome. So Rome is like a perfectly average, normal Civ, doesn't have a specific ability for a specific victory condition. You can play Rome in every game of Civ with any condition, any map, any anything, and still have a good time. So that's perfect. We're gonna play on Prince. The person here who is in Twitch chat that we're helping out right now is playing on Prince difficulty. So why not play on Prince difficulty? None of the advice I'm gonna give changes. How you approach doing it might change, but the advice is still the same. Standard continent, small. We're leaving everything as is. Normal disaster, no mod mods, no game modes, nothing like that. Just normal Civ stuff. Let's load in. We're going to play the first map we get. So we have loaded in with Twitch chat as my witness. Again, you should join the stream. But as my witness, there are like 60 people here right now that all witnessed me spawning. This is the first spawn we got. So we are just going to play this one. So there's a lot of things you want to consider when you're picking your settling city. There's a video I've done on this before. There's four or five kind of things you want to consider. Mainly what we're looking at here is a 2-2 is a settle on fresh water with a 2-2 tile to work. Luckily, we are spawning on turn one with that. If we settle this Plains Hill tile, it'll be a 2-2. Then we can work work this 2-2 tile, have four food, four production, a great little base for us to work from, and the fresh water here is going to give us some housing. If you would like to know what, what a city might do when you settle it, you can go to the settler lens. So the fresh water in the top right here, it's giving us plus three housing. Very important that we're getting that housing early on because the other ways of getting housing are hard to get and it's kind of unnecessary to not at least get some housing from your capital city. So let's just spawn right here. Again, there's more to consider with your opening city, but this is good enough. 2-2 settle with a 2-2 tile and some fresh water fantastic we are going to settle rome right here i'm just going to be clicking through the tech tree none of this is overly important right now you can kind of pick anything through here let's just go animal husbandry so we can see where the horsies are that sounds great when it comes to our production this is where it gets kind of tricky because that what we're going for here is three cities by turn 50. the first thing we want to do in almost every civ game is get a scout getting a scout allows you to see the land if you don't have knowledge of the land you can't make good choices you can only make good choices if you have information the information is acquired by scouts so we are going to build a scout if you would like to check which tiles you are working you can click this little head button right here and you can see we're working this 2-2 tile and working this 2-2 tile it's a good balance of production and food here so as we go as we're going around we're just trying to pick up the goody huts see the land we're not looking for anything specific right now like barbing cannons great we like taking out the barbing cannons they give us arrow score gold all that kind of stuff we like picking up the goody huts we just got the archery boost from a goody hut saves us from having to build a slinger but mostly though i'm just looking for the land right now so we can settle those three cities by turn 50. So I found a barbarian over here. We're still scouting in all directions. Like I said, the more information you have, the better choices you can make. So let's do that. I think what I'm going to do right now is since we don't need the slinger boost anymore, I'm going to build a warrior really quick. I think it'd be worth having a warrior here. There's some barbs over this way. If there's someone spawned right here, we want to make sure we can take him out or at least hold him off. So let's build a warrior quick. Ooh, we're getting like three goody huts early on and a population is really going to help us here skyrocket our production and everything. We know there's barbs around, so we're going to take discipline to fight off the barbs. We need a pantheon. You always want to put God King in first unless you have another way to acquire faith. We don't. We need to get to 25 faith for a pantheon, so we are going to take God King. I typically like to do foreign trade first because it's the easiest to boost. So let's go in here. Discovering a second continent is just a matter of scouting, which we're trying to do anyway. So yeah, I don't want to move my warrior too far away from the capital I just because if there's barbs, I want them to be able to come back and attack. My scout is going to be the unit really going out and, and doing a lot of that work for me. Now that we see the horsies, we know where the horsies are. I think mining makes a lot of sense. Mining early gives you some chops, which can be really nice. Pottery early is fine as well. Basically, you want to get a good collection of some of the early stuff here, but you can pick and choose what you need. If you have a really good campus early on, go for campuses here. If you want to go for a domination game early, you want that great general, go for bronze working. I like mining because it allows me to chop the woods in my empire if I want to chop out an early wonder or something like that. So let's do that. 
So now it is time to start thinking about our first settler, right? We got two units here. We got our scout. It's scouting for us. We got two warriors. They're going to be our bruisers. They're going to fight the scouts. They're going to fight the barbs. They're going to fight the enemies. So we're good here. We have a good base to work with. Now I want to start planning our two cities. The same things still apply. I definitely want to be on fresh water or at least coastal water here. I think this area looks really good. We have a really good harbor here. If we pin that harbor, I am using a mod that'll tell you what the adjacencies are. So if we pin this harbor here, I think settling on the tobacco makes a lot of sense. The reason why this makes a lot of sense, it'll give us a good harbor. It gives us fresh water and a good harbor is going to give us some gold early on, which I think is good. Another option here is settling on one of these tiles and having a, are these grassland or plains? This one's a plains hill, so... That's too close, actually. So your other option is to settle closer in here. I think all things considered, gives us a good harbor, gives us a 2-2 tile to work right away, has fresh water. This isn't a bad settle at all. You could play with it and tinker with it a little bit. But I think this is going to be our second city right here. And then our third city, I think we have a similar thing going on here. I don't fancy the lake too much. Having a lake in the middle of your city is not really ideal because you can't really work those tiles or do anything good with them. So maybe up here would be great. You know, if we can get tobacco and tea early on, that's a lot of amenities so maybe that's worth doing this city here can already grab this cocoa so we're gonna have honey tobacco cocoa and then tea if we settle over here that'll be all four luxury resources that are on our map or on our continent which is great we haven't discovered a second continent yet so that's all four of them so i think settling over here to nab up this tea would be good we have a three two tile here we can work so that leads me to believe this settle might be a good idea the reason why i don't want to settle on either of these woods is because i want to chop them out to grab a wonder to grab a settler or something like that if i settle here I can work this three two tile right away and I can still chop both of these tiles and so I think overall these will be our second and third city now it's time to see if we can get them down by turn 50 all right so settler going in that's going to take eight turns not a bother not a bother at all and we have our warriors there are bruisers they're going to take out the barbs which is awesome stuff and now we keep scouting we found an encampment. We're going to find some enemies ideally but right now our first 50 turns looking pretty chill on turn 14. So we found two barb encampments. Our two warriors are going to town. All I really need to do with this barb encampment is not even kill them, but just protect my settling spot. That's mostly what I need to do. We're going to grab this goodie hut. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring this scout back, right? I do want to scout a little bit farther. What I really want to make sure happens though... Actually, you know what? Let's do this with the warrior. Either way, what I want to make sure happens is that this settler has a clear path to this city, right? If this settler does not have a clear path to this city, it's going to delay the settle. So I'd, I value getting this settler here quickly than scouting any farther right now. Also, I didn't see it before, but these flatland tiles here open up an interesting pyramids place. So just be on the lookout for stuff like this. This is now going to be a very good theater square, right? So as you start to think about your cities, right, you can start to plan them a little bit, get some tax down, get some wonders down. Hope you're going to get them. You know what I mean? So this is a good start for us. Yeah, we're going to use the warriors to clear the way here so we can keep this scout scouting. But mostly we just want to make sure that this settler has somewhere to go. Early empire is a great way to get that third or that second settler out for your third city you know getting production towards settlers can be very helpful here we're gonna try and grow our cities to at least six population to make that work that's gonna be a bit of a stretch but it might happen it might happen never say never it is quite helpful that it seems like we're on our own continent <laughs> that is quite nice that we're not running into any enemies although my approach to the game wouldn't change so we're gonna get this settler going to our city we want to make sure it's relatively protected if barbs appear on either side of it there are warriors there to help deal with that so that is awesome now our next choice is pretty interesting what i'm going to do since there's nobody else around here, you kind of have two options. You can get a builder right now. That builder is going to allow us to work these horses, which is a little bit of production. So we can work the honey and the horses. That's a great use of a builder. We can also get a trader to start this city going. Let's grab a builder real fast. I think getting these two tiles online is valuable for us. We just hit a goodie hut that gave us 20 faith, which is nice. But in any case, once you hit 25 faith from God King, which is the card we've put in here, you're going to get to choose a Pantheon. Feel free to choose whichever pantheon you want. I would recommend religious settlements if it's available. I'm not going to pick religious settlements because what I specifically want to showcase is getting three cities by turn 50 and getting a free settler here isn't really great okay, or great for the example. It's great in general. You should pick this. It's not great for what I'm trying to show off because getting this third settler will make building the, the next one cost more. So I think we're going to skip on religious settlements even though it's the obviously best pick. I think if we're going to get animal husbandry or some camps here, I think getting a camp on the honey is going to be great great for us so let's pick where's the camp one one food and one production from camps 
That way, when we get this early camp, it's going to give us a little extra food in production. We are officially on our own continent, which is making this a little bit easier that we don't have any enemies to deal with. It's the same kind of scenario, though, that if you have your warriors around, you should be able to protect yourself. Now we have the interesting thing is that this city here is going to be the next one. So now that we know that this settler is safe, what we want to do is start moving our warriors in this direction to start clearing out this area ahead of time for when that settler kind of comes to be. This barbarian scout has seen us now. So what he's going to want to do is he's going to want to run back to his buddy, his buddy right here and be like, hey, dude, I found a city for us to murder. Do you want to go murder these people? And he's going to be like, yeah. And then they're going to come and attack you and spawn more units. So we want to cut this guy off before he gets back, which luckily we're already doing. We're also going to settle turn 25 city number two. This city is going on the tobacco, which is a tradable good. It's hard to, there's no one I can trade with. If you settle on a luxury resource, you actually get it to trade. So it becomes part of your inventory. So we don't have to build a plantation on it to, to trade. Because we're Rome, we already start with monuments, so that's kind of nice. Leaves me open to building a few different things here. What we're working right now is this 2-2 tile. We don't have a lot of other production tiles to work after that. This camp is going to be pretty good because of our Pantheon. I think what I want to do here, though, is just build one more warrior. I know that we're not going to be able to scout anywhere for a little bit because we're landlocked. I think another warrior to clear out some of these barbs will be nice. So we've boxed this scout in. He has nowhere to go. He's not going to be able to tell his friends where we are, which is great. Now we can put this camp down. This camp is going to give us extra food, extra production, and that will allow us to build our next settler by turn 35. And then you can see by the time we get up here, it'll be before turn 50 if everything goes to plan. Now that that's done, let's come and grab the horses. The horses are also a tradable good if you're looking for some extra gold. Also allows you to build horse units if that's your jam. So we'll head over here and do that. That's awesome. Now we're working quite a few production tiles and we can get the settler much more quickly. All right, the last thing I'm gonna do just for this example, you can already see we're on pace to make it before turn 50 anyways. This will be done by turn 36. You move your settler up here. It'll be settled by turn 42, 43. So we're on a good pace right now. What I would say here though, is when you chop early on, chopping is gonna give you production towards one specific thing. I find chopping either settlers or wonders to be super useful. For instance, in this city, when we build the pyramids, we would definitely chop these two rainforests here or one of these woods or something to make sure we secure the pyramids same for this settler the longer amount of time a city is in the game the more time it has to do stuff and this 221 woods tile frankly kind of sucks we're not even working it right now on our next growth we'll just work this 3-1 tile so this 2-1 tile is not even very good i'm gonna chop this production and it'll knock three turns off the settler here getting it even faster and now we might get this city out by turn of 40 which would be even better for our first governor, I'm just going to pick Pingala. Pingala is great. We like Pingala. Pingala is one of those comfy governors. We'll just pick that. Doesn't really matter for this example. Now what we can do, though, is we can also put the production towards settler card in when we get it. Oh, we have it right here. We have colonization. We can put the production towards settler card in. Because I only one turn away, I'm not going to bother. But now we're already at the point where we can build this settler a little more quickly if you're already working on it. But let's just give our cities two production here. All right, this settler is finished. We're pretty cozy over here. Our warriors are taking care of things i'm not worried about this warrior at all although we might be in a minute we are building another warrior over here so i will remain unconcerned it's good to have a little bit of defense i think what i want to go for next is irrigation we're not going to really farm a resource we could farm this wheat we already used the chop though for the settler and that's fine so we're just going to go for irrigation so we can start getting some of the plantations that are around especially these double banana plantations those will feel really really nice now we have a few options as well. We have 217 gold. So at this point in the game, you can start purchasing items with gold. That's a great way to get some cities up and running without anyone to trade with here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to build a trader in this city. I'm going to buy it with gold. This trader is going to trade with Rome and get a little bit of production and food, which will get Antium kind of rocking and rolling, get it into the game a little bit. We have Temple of Artemis here. This is where you can start planning your districts and your wonders, which is a different video for sure, a different type of video. I think for right now, let's go for a granary let's get our capital city to grow a little bit there's nothing wrong with that so with this warrior here i am a little bit concerned i'm gonna hold off on the trade route for a turn or two so it doesn't get bamboozled yeah i would definitely get bamboozled that was a good decision i feel good about that choice let's kill this bad boy here so i'm actually gonna kill this guy with this scout the reason is i want to get this promotion right away so look at that promotion here the scout is healthy enough it'll be fine we'll kill it with that clear the barb camp feels great and now our settler can slide right in 
There we are, turn 37, just random game here, random kind of map, just picked a decent Civ, and we have our three cities down by turn 37, which feels really, really good. What I'm going to do is, since the barbs are mucking up around here, I'm actually just going to send this trader to Aquila, and then we can get it going in the next turn. There we are. Now, Aquila is going to get into the game here. I would trade with Antium, but these barbs might be in the way. You know what? I feel pretty good about being able to clear the barbs. We are going to trade with Antium. It's going to be one food, one production, and two gold. It'll get this city online here, but also build a road through all my cities, which Rome already gets. So for Rome, that's not a huge deal, but for another Civ, it might be. So we'll trade through there. We'll boost currency. We'll do that. But there we are. Turn 38. We got three cities. We are up and running. They're looking good. As long as you get like a relatively decent start, this shouldn't be too much trouble all of it's just pretty practical stuff you know we saw that we could get a good camp early on so we took the camp pantheon we grabbed a builder made these tiles good that gave us enough production for the settlers we planned out two good cities that aren't too far away from us either so that saves a lot of time we've soaked up a lot of the map here we have quite a bit of the area that belongs to us and we've killed a bunch of barbs so all in all a great start for us the only couple of things i would say to consider are that like everything you build in your cities will be different depending on your game obviously we didn't need to build monuments because we start with them but mostly you'll be building some monuments early on instead of granaries maybe you would have built the temple of artemis instead of this granary here so that kind of stuff changes mostly though this was just to show you how generally to approach a game on prince difficulty just a normal civ game an average leader a random map how you want to approach the first 50 turns until you get three cities mainly get a couple of scouts get a couple of warriors then build your settlers and your scouts and your warriors can kind of clear the path for you and making sure you know where you want to put your cities right like we knew we wanted to put one here so we sent our units up that way to take control of that area once that was done we moved our units down this way so we could take control of this area didn't have any trouble no fuss no muss and here we are and a great start for this game and, and ready to win it. I just want to do a quick addendum to this video quickly before we go on a raid because a lot of people pointed out that that start was very good. We had a very good start in that game and that makes it a little bit easier. Now, this start is pretty bad. It's not a great start at all, but there are still things you can do to make the start as good as possible. So let's talk about some of those things you can do. I recommend just restarting. I know a lot of people don't like that. Civ is meant to be fun. If you're new to Civ, why torture yourself with a bad start? Try and take as many pieces off the table that are making the things harder for you when you're learning. And one of those things might be a bad start. So I would just re-roll till you get a good one. Anyways, if you don't want to do that, let's talk about what we can do here to make this start better. So first off, you're playing on Prince. All right, that's the scenario right now. We're playing on Prince difficulty, which opens up some opportunities for us. Let's just talk about the normal things we want to do. Normally, we want fresh water, a 2-2 start with a 2-2 tile to work. I'm not going to get the 2-2 tile to work right away. I can choose to settle in place and get the 2-2 tile to work right away, but not a 2-2 start. Or I can choose this 2-2 start here, but not have the 2-2 tile over there. What I'm going to do is I'm going to choose to settle here. The reason for that is this will create a 2-2 tile and this still is a 2-2 tile. Now I at least have two of those tiles to work with. If I don't make this a 2-2 tile, then I only have one. So let's start there. And again, we're just gonna keep scouting. I don't know if I'm gonna do this whole thing again. There we are. So we've settled Rome. Now we have a 2-2 start, right? Here's what we can do. The start isn't perfect. You can work to production here. That's not a bad choice. You can move over here and get this extra culture early on. That's not a terrible choice either. I'm going to work this 2-1 tile just because we already have culture from the monument. But then you just start doing the same things. We're just going to keep scouting. We're going to keep doing what we're doing. The advice doesn't change based on your star, right? We're still going to build a scout. We're still going to do those things. And it's going to be a great time. We have our first goodie hut here. What's it going to give us? It's going to give us a whole new population. So there we go. Things aren't all bad with this start. Now we have a population. We can work the we can work the 2-2 tile now and the 2-1 tile. So we're already back in gear. You know, got a little lucky with the goodie hut. But you'll have goodie huts in your games as well. That's great. And now this start isn't very very good but it does open up an awesome opportunity for us and that opportunity is the great bath floodplain tiles along the river containing the great bath are now immune to flood damage and they give you faith in all of that stuff so what we can do is we can put a great bath down why not do it why not chuck a great bath down that might be exciting for everyone 
right? Playing on Deity might be hard to get, but you can build it right now. And as you can see, I'm not going to play this whole thing out, but it wasn't a perfect start, but you just make the most of what you can do. What we could do is have a decent 2-2 settle and work this 2-2 tile. What we can do is scout around for some goodie huts that might help us. What we can do is use the land to our advantage and build a decent wonder for this land. Last game, it was the pyramids. This game, it's the great bath. It's going to turn some of these tiles to be a little bit better for us, right? We have a decent campus up here. Like not, not everything's terrible. Like a bad start's a bad start, but now you can plan. There's a plus four campus here. There's another plus three campus here. So there's some things going on that are nice, right? There's another plus three campus there. So when you have a bad start like this, when you have a bad start, you're only looking at 10 tiles. And the start is very important, but the start is only 10 tiles, right? And while it does set you back a little bit, as you explore, you might discover opportunities that we didn't have in the last game either. And so not everything is like doom and gloom awful. Just make the most of what you can do. We can do this. We can put the great bath down. We can put this plus four campus down. There are things we can control and we are going to control them and do that. This is also a plus three campus. This is also a plus three. Like, things are great. Things are fine. We have some fresh water we can settle over here. We had some more 2-2 tiles. So things aren't all bad. Anyways, I just wanted to add that little addendum to the video because it does change a like it does, it does change a little bit if you have a bad start in terms of what you can and can't do. But the advice is still the same. Still scout, still settle on fresh water, still grab the goodie huts, still do all the things that we talked about. If you enjoyed this video, or if you have any other questions about kind of how to approach the early part of a civilization game, make sure you let us know in the comments below. There are loads of people in this community that are willing to help you out. Don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe button, all of that fun stuff as well. Join the Discord server. The Discord server exists. The Twitch stream exists. Those links are in the description. That'll help you out quite a bit as well. Otherwise, just thank you so much for watching, and we will see you in the next one.